Hey you all, my name is Dora Shay, Shayla, or an original theme, and today I am bringing to you the Fathers of Modern Medicine series, and I decided what better time than now since the Stay at Home Act is extended for 30 more days. I'm going to take up 11 of your days teaching you about 11 different Fathers of Modern Medicine, and we'll talk about basically how they paved the way through health and how we know it as it is today. So I think that this is important because without these men, we would be still very sickly, underdeveloped, and super unhealthy, and not just what we consider a healthy, unhealthy as obesity today. So could you imagine like going to the doctor or the dentist or even the gynecologist and not having like the professionalism and comfort and cleanliness that we do? I don't think that I could Be sure to check out unoriginalfiend.com. All my social media links are down at the bottom on the home page. And I'll see you on the next episode later. Hey, you all. So today we're going to talk about father number one, and his name is Guillermo Fracastoro. He was the first person to suspect that infectious agents are caused by disease, meaning whatever you come in contact with makes you sick. So he discovered the three modes of transmission and the three modes are person to person at a distance and through inanimate objects. So that means that basically you can get sick from being around another person. You can get sick at a distance if someone sneezes or coughs, or you can get sick through something that you touch. So father number two is Ignat Smelovies, and he basically created the cure to childbed fever. And he did that by introducing antiseptic procedures, which is basically washing your hands before you give an exam or surgery. And not just washing your hands with water, but he specified washing your hands with a chlorine solution. So unfortunately, Mr. Ignat was one of our fathers who was fired and then later on died from what he was trying to cure. The irony. Our third father that we're going to talk about is Louis Pasteur. He is a microbiologist who basically used anthrax to cure rabies. And another important thing that he did was he discovered the cause and effect. So when I say cause and effect, I basically mean that he discovered that diseases are caused by microbes, which further led to us pasteurizing certain things like beer and milk. So you're no longer sick when inhaling or ingesting those products. The fourth father that we're going to talk about today is Dr. Robert Koch. And he, like Louis Pasteur, did something with anthrax, except what Dr. Koch did was proved the life cycle of anthrax, and he also proved the chain of infection. So in 1883, he discovered the first waterborne epidemic in Egypt. The fifth father that we're going to talk about today, his name is James Lynn. He was a military surgeon who served on the HMS Salisbury where he basically cured scurvy using a control group and he cured them with one lemon and two oranges. The sixth father that we're going to talk about today is a wealthy farmer by the name of Benjamin Jetsy. He is known for discovering the first step of the smallpox vaccine. So he basically scratched the arm of someone who had smallpox and then took one of his slave children that were not affected and scratched their arm with the smallpox to see what would happen. The seventh father that we're going to talk about today is John Snow, who's considered the father of epidemiology because he was the inventor of the spot map. It was first used to track the cholera epidemic in the Golden Square of London. So he basically tracked the people that got sick, and then he also tracked the pumps that sent water out to their communities around it to pinpoint the location of the sickness. The father that we're going to talk about today is Hippocrates. And actually, the Hippocratic Oath is inspired after him. So he's famous because he wrote three books. He wrote Epidemic 1 and 2, 
how disease transfers in the four humors. So the four humors is basically air, fire, earth, and water. And he discovered that basically your heart is related to air, your liver is related to fire, and your spleen is related to earth, and your brain is related to water. The father that we're going to talk about today is John Grant, and he is responsible for the Bill of Mortality, which is basically a record of how you died that we get today. And on that Bill of Mortality, your death story is included, the humor that you use, which as we talk about with Hippocrates on the next episode, you'll learn more about the four humors, which are related to natural elements. And it also includes a specific definition of how you died. So basically, is your death acute or is it chronic? Is it acute meaning is it short term or was it chronic meaning long term? The father that we're going to be talking about today is Bernardino Ramazzi. He is known for getting to the bottom of the disease of artisans, which basically solves two questions. What is wrong with artists and why do they die so early? So with his study of that, he came to three conclusions, basically that the character is harmful of the material that the artist is creating. It either has a violent or irregular motion that differs from the everyday life, or it just has a natural posture or their posture is bad. And he is also known for his work with occupational health and industrial hygiene. The father that we're going to talk about today, his name is Thomas Sidingham, and he is known as the father of English medicine because he insisted that doctors visit the patients because the atmosphere that they are in could be the cause of their sickness. He was one of the first to use iron to treat anemia in the USA. Thomas was also studied by doctors because he gave a very detailed physical examination. He kept very great records and he also paid attention to the treatment that he was giving people. So much so to the point where he came out with a book and the book is called The Method of Curing Fevers on Venereal Diseases. So that means that he was just that good at curing diseases and keeping notes that he basically was able to help with the concept of species and diseases by basically classifying the different illnesses and their treatments. <laughs>